it's trainer lots again thank you for viewing this this is the third part of electrical installation material in the unit perform electrical installation so today i'm going to cover motor starter material remember most of our appliances like water pump need to be installed so how do we go by installing a water pump so today we'll be taking you through the material that aids in the starting or the installation of motor so i'm not definitely tackling on motor as a machine but i'm tackling on how to install it and material that would be useful in installation of motor so let me take you as you can see this one is one of the installation wiring diagram of dol direct online starting so this one is just a bonus so that you can understand further how we get up to this so motor installation starter is a device that controls the rotation of motor and protects the motor from damage as well as fault so we have various starting methods and uh, i'll just go by only the three most common and this one is direct online starting or the dol and then the forward reverse or sometimes we refer to as advanced dol starting and then we have the star delta starting but the most common about all these three methods of starting is that they all share uh, certain components or part which is just essential in the starting so we have the protective device which can either be in form of circuit breaker or fuses we also have the magnetic conductor we have the thermal overload relay we have the push button switches delay timer indicator lamps the cables as well as the motor terminal plate or box so all these makes up a starter so let's start with the protective device i'll not be taking you through this because the notes are very clear you can check the notes so uh, the circuit breaker uh, protects against over current short circuit and earth fault and it, it does that by tripping whenever there's an, a short circuit in the circuit it will trip uh, the most common circuit breaker that we use is the low voltage circuit breakers and this it can either be a miniature circuit breaker molded case circuit breaker or a leakage at leakage circuit breaker so i've just uh, given the simple the circuit simple and the most common which is the miniature circuit breaker from the single pole to four pole you can see it directly the next is the isolator and the fuse actually isolator is a, a three a three phase fuse system so when i have three fuses controlling a three phase i would like to call it isolator but what makes it more isolating is that you can manually disconnect the fuses that's why we refer to it as isolator but the fuse are there we have different kinds of fuses uh, the cartridge the high rupturing capacity the striker the blade but the most common that we are used is the, we, we we used to is the cartridge fuses for this case we have the contactor the contactor is the most essential actually we refer to it as a, an electric switch device we cannot say it's the same as a relay but uh, its mechanism is almost similar with the relay so a conductor is an electrical control switch used for switching uh, the stator or the motor so it has many terminals as you can see that's why it has a, it is referred as contactor it has many contacts so we have the main contacts which is the live one live two and live three and then we have the t1 t2 and t3 we usually refer to the as the output of the main terminal so we have the input and output of the main terminals that's where we are going to connect our the three phase live or if it's for single phase the live and intro will pass through there before it heads to the motor through an overload relay and then we also have other other terminals we have the auxiliary terminals this one's for control circuits so we have the normally open and the normally closed terminals i will show you how it's done later in the diagram and then we have the coil terminals that energizes the coil usually the coil terminals receive uh, terminals in uh, in in dc4 we are later going to see it during the installation and we are going to explain further so it when the coil is energized the contacts are closed when it's not energized the contacts are open involved helping the power to flow from the input end to the output end then we have the thermal overload relay uh, almost looks similar to the conductor except that it has more additional uh, special features like the trip the auto uh, the clock icon like 
So all those are additional. So it has the main terminals, which is also the L1 to L3, L2 to T2 for the input as well and output of the power circuit line. Then it has also auxiliary, uh, the normal open and normal closed terminals. But this case it's labeled differently, 95 and 96 usually normal closed and then 97, 95 and uh, 97, 98 is now the normal uh, open. In addition, it has also other pins as I was said. So its work is to protect the motor from sustained excessive current or sustained overload. That's why it's called thermal overload relay. So it's additional protection other than the circuit breaker or the fuse or the isolator. Then we have uh, the push button. The push button switches, uh, the name says one of the switches we use, but these are not double, those just, we, we, they're operated by pressing. So we have two kind of switches with the, the normally open and the normally closed. A normally open implies that the contacts are usually open. So whenever you press the, the push button switch, now you're closing the contacts. That's what it implies. The normally closed, it means the contacts are usually closed. So when you press the, 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 the push button, you are opening the contact. So normally open implies the start. That's why when you press a start push button, it means you are closing the contact and you are authorizing the this operation of the circuit. And then the stop is the normally closed. So the contacts are usually closed. When you press, you are opening the contact. That's what it means, as simple as that. Then quickly, let's go to the timer. So the delay timer or timer switch allows the starter to operate at a given interval so maybe i can set my my starter to maybe to operate in 30 minutes time and i'm not even there so it will it will give allowance up to that time if i'm not there patiently waiting for the system so after 30 seconds 30 minutes it will start to operating so that's what the timer is it has also six terminals and uh, from these we have different types of timer but uh, i'm using the one that i've indicated you have seen how i've labeled it so the terminal a1 and a2 usually is the, for the first line or the connection of the single phase that is the live and neutral gates there and then s or sometimes labeled as a3 is usually the trigger a terminal and then the uh, below you will see terminal 15 16 and 17 so terminal 15 is a common which connect can either work with the 16 that will be for normally open or work with 18 for normally closed if you want to use signal for normally closed then you just go to use terminal 15 and uh, terminal 18 that's what it implies that's how i can explain with the timer then you have the indicator lamps this one looks similar like the push button switch but in case this one you cannot press them it just uh, it works to indicate it gives a glow light so the glow light can be either red yellow or green and uh, it's as stated there for green it means the system is running red the system has stopped and yellow it means there was a problem with the system and it, it resets and then we have the motor terminal box and uh, the motor terminal box, that's where you're going to do the installation. You're going to, to connect your cable, your contactor to the motor. So the point at which you're connecting the control circuit and the power circuit, I mean the power circuit to the motor, is the term, motor terminal box. So for the single, you are likely to get the three terminals, the live, neutral, and earth. But for the three phase, you're likely to get six contacts, the U1, V1, V, and the W1, where the uh, terminals from the power are, are usually terminated and then you have the u2 v2 and w2 aids in now running of the motor if you want to connect the motor in star you want to connect the motor in delta you have to use the auxiliary and you can see based on how i have highlighted the, how to connect it in star and how to connect it in delta after you have terminated your motor terminal box to the power circuit i think uh, that's all i can say for today we also have the control panel box this is used for housing and uh to make sure that everything is housed properly and then, and then the last part i wanted to give you as a bonus this now when you are drawing you remember you know you are supposed to understand each item as one but now after that this is how you draw your work so you can see the first is the power circuit diagram showing how live one live two from the supply is getting to the motor, three-phase motor. And then you can see the control circuit showing you from live one because you have to feed the 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 the, the start or the the stop button 
stop push button through the live so i'll be taking you through each of these when i'll be doing the actual video of installation for these uh, motors especially in dol star delta and four drivers and then the far end diagram you can see is the wiring diagram showing you actually with the pictorial representation showing you how the red yellow and blue face are fed into the system to the motor with the control together so that's all for today uh, please uh, all i say is continue being the subscriber like share and comment below what you think of this next part will be part four of electrical installation material and will be about electrical fencing and uh, i hope i'll see you during that time so thank you for your time see you next time it's trying to again Thank you for viewing this. This is the